I think mechanical keyboards, I think of two things primarily. A clicky and tactile experience with my hands that make me shudder at the thought of ever typing on domes again. And secondly, my wallet weeping in sorrow of the money that will evidently gush out of it in the acquisition of a Mac keyboard. And at just $29 delivered and coming with a full 104 backlit RGB Artumo blue switches, I was pretty skeptical this thing was going to be any good. To say my expectations were low was probably a complete understatement. But let's talk about the first impressions. When I first received the box, I almost laughed given how extremely no frills it is. I mean, it's almost as if they put effort into making it this plain. Regardless, I don't care about the packaging if the product itself is great to use. Now, the actual board is quite surprising. The braided USB cable is both long and very thick, feels very premium. The board does feel a little light, and while the top plate is aluminium, the rest of the case is fully plastic. The design of the keyboard is an exposed switch design, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but I will admit it does provide more access to the light being admitted from the switches, and even better access to cleaning around the keys. It just honestly gives me a feeling of being a little bit unfinished or less sleek, but that's only my opinion. The keycaps appear to be a double shot ABS plastic and not PBT, which is to be expected at this price point. I'll also point out that I find the font on the keycaps to be ghastly, and if it weren't for the price, it would probably be a deal breaker in all honesty. And the symbols to represent some keys, such as the caps lock key, isn't clear of its purpose, and for anyone that isn't entirely familiar with the layout of a keyboard, may get a little bit confused. The height of the keys from the board means that the indication lights above the numpads aren't visible when set at a comfortable distance from myself. This means I can't tell if caps lock is on, if number lock is on, or scroll lock is enabled or not. When typing vigorously on the keyboard, I can from time to time hear a slight metallic sound, which I assume is from the springs in the switches bouncing the keys back quickly. As with all Met keyboards, I intend on putting O-rings on the caps to dampen the bottom out. I hope this may help in reducing the metallic sound. Now, I won't review this keyboard on the switch color, specifically because it does come in more the common switches, brown, blue, and red. I went with blue on this one because I've never owned a blue switch keyboard before and my go-to is normally a brown but I wanted to experience the really tactile clickiness and uh, I can say the experience is pretty full-on. The click is super loud and I'm unsure if I like it or not. Going back to my brown switch daily keyboard it just seems whisper quiet which I never thought I would have said before today. So let's talk about specifications. Weighing into 820 grams this board is an aluminium upper with plastic bottom measuring 445 mils long, 130 mils deep and 75 mils high it's pretty compact for a 104 keyboard. It's got a non-detachable 1.5 meter braided cable and 104 keys come fitted to the board. It works with every version of Windows, but according to the supplier, there's no macOS support. However, I did test it with my Mac. I can type and function keys don't work out of the box, but macOS X Catalina and some of the earlier versions allow function remapping. So you probably could get the full experience if required. This model, like I said, does come in red, blue, or brown outmoose switches, and they feel somewhat smooth, but with the ever so occasional press feeling almost resisted. I don't know whether this is because I'm used to blue switches or they could do with lubing, probably that. But let's just have a quick chat about the pros and cons. I mean, it's really hard to be picky on a keyboard when you pay less than $30 for it. But if we had to take money out of the equation and just be fully objective, these are things that I would probably say about it. Uh, as I mentioned, the font is terrible. Probably my number one disappointment. Keyboard is very light and not grippy on a bare wooden desk. However, it is okay on a desk map, but you know, not everyone has one of those, so just keep that in mind. Status lights for functions such as uh, caps lock aren't really visible from a standard angle that you would sit with the keyboard at a sort of like arm's length because the keys are much higher than the surface of the board, so that's kind of annoying. Now, keys like print, screen, lock, uh, scroll lock, and pause break are just labeled as PS, SL, and PB, which is confusing and annoying. And the symbol keys like hash and brackets uh, really aren't that easily identifiable. And finally, this could be just clutching at straws or outright nitpicking, but it's annoying that the top of the keyboard, there are protruding screws, while at the bottom of the keyboard, they're flush. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just keep it uniform across the whole board. Um, it doesn't really make sense, but it just, it just stuck out to me. Um, and even still, the good things about this keyboard aren't hard to find either. The keys do feel stable, tactile, and are definite in their press. Um, everything I want from a Mac. The N key rollover is great and provides access to functions I use a lot. Like the calculator, media functions, and launching a browser window. The RGB is really bright and offers heaps of patterns, colors, and customization. 
and you don't even need the software to um, cycle through the different RGB modes. You can do it all directly from the keyboard. And I even tested plugging it into just a USB power brick and I can still change the function. So it requires no OS input whatsoever, which is which is kind of cool. And you know, with the software, you can get down to really crazy um, intricate customization. So it's quite limitless, limitless what you can do. The software is super fast to install and not required. It's also fairly easy to navigate and use for assigning custom keys, macros, and color combos. However, Windows does think it's a virus and you have to tell it to stand down and let you install the software, just to be aware. So I guess in conclusion, I think overall this keyboard is pretty good value. Uh, from a standpoint of value, I would rate this keyboard 10 out of 10 all day every day. It's definitely worth more than what it's priced at. And you know, this keyboard is, you know, it's labeled as a Kogan keyboard, but I've seen so many on Amazon and eBay that basically is this keyboard just rebranded and some of those are going for $50, $60 and selling. So, you know, it's obvious that I paid less than, than what its market value even is at this point. But, um, you know, it doesn't do everything perfect. And if you're looking for a cheap Mac keyboard to just dip your, tip your toe in and just see if you like the idea of Mac keyboards and you want to play around with, you know, RGB and stuff like that, or just keep it as a spare, you know, a backup in case your main breaks or a gift for a friend who's never had a Mac keyboard before, this would be perfect in any of those scenarios. You know, if, you, if you're wanting the absolute best keyboard experience, this is probably not it. Uh, but still, I'm very happy with my purchase, and while I may not decide to keep this as my main keyb, I'll definitely find a purpose in my setup, and it won't just collect dust. So anyway guys, that's all I have for today's video, and as always, I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.